Hey everybody, so now that we've gotten through all of the heroes and the, both of the villains from the Ant-Man expansion, I figured now would be a good time to have a video that just reviews the cards that are actually in that expansion, kind of a small box review, but not so much as an opening, more of a, we'll go through the heroes and kind of some interesting combinations, maybe some tactics and some tricks, uh, and then we'll also do the villains later on as well, particularly the masterminds, just to kind of dive deep really uh, into how the cards actually work with the rest of the Marvel Legendary sets. So uh, we have five heroes in here, and remember the two key abilities that got introduced that play into these heroes are empowered and size changing, with also microscopic size changing coming into play there too. Uh, empowered means if uh, the hero plays off of that empowered ability, they get an additional attack point for every hero of that class that it calls out in the HQ. Most of these are singular class callouts. Some of them have multiple empowerments, like the one for Wonder Man, he does have a double one in here. Uh, and then later on, I know some late later cards in the series have double empowerment as well. Uh, and then we got size size changing and microscopic size changing. Now size changing, it only happens once uh, and it calls out a class and that makes the card cheaper to purchase in the HQ. If we have microscopic size changing, there might be multiple symbols of that hero class, meaning each time one of those hero classes is played uh, based on the number, it can go down by two even more. So if there's four of the class type, that means it could be f two times four, meaning eight, it could be eight less. Uh, so definitely makes things cheaper, and I think that's the whole whole theme of this uh, hero set to begin with. So to go ahead and get us started, we're going to go with the star of the show here. We have Ant-Man. Now, Ant-Man, he is a tech-heavy hero, and he definitely uh, focuses around the size changing. All of his cards have size changing or microscopic size changing abilities, uh, meaning that they become cheaper. His common, for example, here just has the standard one, but that puts it down to two, making it extremely cheap. And its ability is a draw effect. So you're going to be drawing a card. Draw cards are always great in this game because that means you can potentially get more cards into your hand, making better combos with better setups. His next common is a uh, microscopic size changing, also a tech hero. And if you played a tech hero on top of that, uh, or before that, you can you may discard a card, and if you do that, you can then draw another card. This is kind of an answer to that a problem for draw decks where if they have a lot of wounds or you keep getting something in your hand that doesn't necessarily help you, you want to get rid of it uh, at the cost of just discarding and then drawing a new card. It's a pretty fair trade, in my opinion. Uh, and then it has microscopic size changing of three, so it could actually go into the negatives, giving you a positive recruit. We then have the only strength hero in Ant-Man's uh, little hero set here of four cards, and that's Giant Ego. Now, I actually think this is Ant-Man's best card to combo with all of his other cards. This is the heavy hitter. It does cost six, but size changing makes it four, and it comes with two attack. But the ability is you get one additional attack for each card you drew this turn. That's phenomenal, considering the first two cards we just went over are usually draw cards. Um, so you're going to have some additional attack here. And if you combo that with other draw heroes, you're going to have a sweet, sweet attack giant Ant-Man. Uh, now, finally, we have his rare card here. Now, I don't think it's as useful as his giant ego. His other cards are probably more beneficial. But it's nice to have the rare here because it comes with microscopic, microscopic size changing of 5 tech, meaning it could be 10 in getting in the positive. It's really, really cool that you may be able to get a uh, rare card for free, considering they're so hard to get in any other case. Uh, and then its ability is you can add size changing of tech to any other non-size changing card that exists, uh, potentially making something else cheaper for you to buy. So Ant-Man's theme is definitely focused on draw power and definitely focused on attack strengths. Um, he doesn't have any recruits, so you're not going to be buying anything with him. You're going to de be depending on that size changing ability to come into play and make things cheaper. Now, things that go well with Ant-Man, uh, or other heroes I would say would be Iron Man, because he's tech heavy as well. Black Widow, she also has some tech and some draw cards. Uh, you could try doing a Wolverine mix because that gives you some more draw power, but remember, he's instinct, and Ant-Man does have some cards that depend on tech. Um, and then f act finally, and I saved this one for last because I think it just works the best out of all of the other suggestions I gave you, is uh, Winter Soldier. He not only is he a tech and strength hero, but he's a man out of time abilities that are dependent on tech heroes. So you can get some 
not only current hand combos off, but some futuristic combos. So really, really want to watch out for those cards to kind of combo well with Ant-Man. So next we have the Wasp. The Wasp is the female version of Ant-Man. Uh, she's pretty BA. Uh, the th br problem with her cards, though, is she is the, what I would say the exact opposite of what Ant-Man is. She's not focused on drawing. She does have the size ch changing ability, but her types are already reversed. She's covert in range, so the like I like to think the exact opposite of tech and strength. And um, her microscopic size changing uh, of, is only for covert. All of her cards are only for covert. Forget microscopic size changing or size changing, so you're going to need some covert cards to make her uh, synergize well with others. Um, her abilities are also contingent. Uh, her first two abilities for her first two cards are contingent on covert heroes. The first one you get two additional attacks. So that could turn a one attack into three attack, which three attack is no joke, but uh, at the cost of trying to have another covert hero is kind of hard to make happen sometimes. Um, not say like think disregard it, but is it's a situational card. Uh, the same thing with her next card. This does add some recruit, so a little different from Ant-Man. He has zero recruit there, but she rings in two. Uh, she does have a draw ability, but that's at the cost of having another covert hero. So you better make sure you're having covert hero stacked in your deck. And now we're going to get in her range hero, which I think is kind of funny. Uh, it's her only range hero in this set, but uh, it's size changing of covert. So if you have other range heroes already, which you probably do if you're trying to get this card for range, you're not going to be getting uh, her any cheaper. She's six any other day. Now, the one cool thing about her is her ability here is you get one additional attack for each card you've recruited this turn. That is an awesome late game ability. Not early game, late game. Because in the beginning, you're probably barely scraping by with one recruit. Maybe two. So she could be a heavy hitter for later, but not early on. And now we get in her rare card. The Wasp rare card I actually think is phenomenal because it's got that microscopic size changing of five covert again, making her cheaper. But the real reason I like her the most is because she has the Avenger ability turned on after an Avenger card is played. So if you play an Avenger card, she gets one additional attack for each other Avenger you played this turn. All of these cards in this expansion are Avengers. So chances are, if you have this expansion, you're going to have a lot of Avengers to build off of in the first place. Now, having said that, I, that makes me feel that the best cards to combo with her are things like Captain America. Any of the Captain Americas, really, because they are all Avenger heavy, and then they're also multi-class heavy, so a little diversity is actually a good thing, and it makes them stronger. So definitely think of uh, Captain America when you're trying to find another Avenger to pair well here. Uh, if you don't have another Avenger, or you're thinking you want to change it up a little bit, uh, the, pers the first person that comes to mind that has a covert and a range split that might work really well, Storm. Uh, Storm is a good all-around card. She builds off of other range heroes, and there is a range card in here and then her covert cards with her the, those specific abilities they're not contingent on other previous classes you're going to play them regardless meaning you will get an effect that you can then chain to play off of the wasp so just uh captain america or storm are my two suggestions for the wasp uh if you have other suggestions please leave them in the comments below uh, and we'll give them a shot now we're going to get into uh, some little more interesting characters here. Now, we're leaving the realm of Ant-Man and going into Jocosta. Jocosta is the female version of Ultron. I would like to think of her as Frankenstein's wife. Um, and the thing about Jocosta is she is half tech and half range. And all of her abilities really are each... They could be standalone abilities of, her, of their own. Like, you can take any one of these cards and pair them with any other deck that you're trying to build. They're very useful. Uh, I say that with a caveat, the first one being the, the probably the most likely as an exception, because it is an empowered card where you need to play a tech card in order to get empowered by tech in the HQ. So you will probably be running this heavy with a tech deck. You don't have to, but the best effects are going to be from the tech deck. Now, have, now remember, when you play empowered cards and you're running a specific type, don't necessarily buy all of that out of the HQ. You may want to keep some of those tech cards in the HQ just so you can then get some additional attack strength from Joe Costa. Uh, that goes for any empowered card, really. Uh, the next, her next common is Reprocess. This is a cool card in the sense that it gets, it's used for purchasing. It gives you two recruit, but 
its its ability. If you discard, if your discard pile is empty, you get two more recruit. Otherwise, shuffle your discard pile into your deck. Neither of those situations are bad. If I get four recruit from one card, that's awesome. I'm probably going to be able to buy something guaranteed. If I don't get the two recruit, well, hey, I at least get to shuffle my discard pile back into my deck and potentially get some good cards again next turn. Maybe things that I already just recruited. Uh, so either way, the ability is pretty handy. And now we move on to my favorite out of Joe Costa is the reprocess or the holographic image inducer. The reason I love this card it's draw two cards. Yes, it's six, but size changing of tech may make it four, and then it's draw two cards. I don't even care that there's no recruit or attack strength. You're giving me two more cards. I could get two cards potentially that have two recruit or two attack between the two of them. Why not? And then also setting up for more chains later on. A phenomenal card that even if I wasn't running a tech deck, I would still try to get. And then finally, we've got her rare. It's a seven cost card, so a little cheaper than the other two if you didn't get microscopic size change and help you out. It comes with five attack, and it's a range. Uh, and this is actually just a attack version of reprocess. Uh, it comes with five attack, and if your discard pile is empty, instead of getting two recruit, you get two more attack. Otherwise, shuffle your discard pile into your deck. So this is a recruiting, re uh, recruiting card. This is an attacking card. The abilities are great either way. Uh, there's not really a situational uh, scenario that I can think that would have to apply here. They're both pretty awesome. Uh, so having said that, the cards that I think actually would pair well with Joe Costa are other tech heroes, in particular Iron Man or Superior Iron Man because he's a tech and a range. Um, Doctor Strange or uh, Supreme Soldier Doctor Strange. Uh, because they are also range and have some draw abilities based off of that as well, so they can kind of chain well together. Uh, but those are like my four recommendations. I don't think that they have to be the cards that pair well with Joe Costa, because I think she could pair well with anything, depending on which cards you're going to focus on, particularly the draw two card. She's a very good uh, team player hero, I guess you could say. And now we're going to move on to the Black Knight. Now, Black Knight is interesting because he's a very colorful hand. He's got two Instinct, he's got one Covert, and he's got one Strength. Uh, the first card out of his uh, deck, his common, is Defend the Weak. It's two Recruit, and his other ability, you have to play another Strength here, return a zero cost card from your discard pile to your hand. I think this card was only put here strictly as an answer to Morgan Le Fay's ability. I don't think it's a phenomenal ability or card, really. Uh, the situational type of playing on top of a strength hero here for a, an effect that might help you maybe one attack or one recruit isn't a huge deal uh, is not, I think, necessarily worth the three cost. You might as well buy a Maria Hill. Uh, not to say that it can't be useful because it's an actual Avenger hero and a hero type but or a strength hero class, but... It's, it's an underwhelming card. Let's just leave it at that. Moving on. Uh, now we've got Amul... This is where Black Knight really shines. This is Amulet of Avalon card. Three costs to get, yes, a zero attack at first, but you can become empowered by whatever choice you want in the HQ. If you all remember my Black Knight playthrough, this was the card that was my heavy hitter. If you get two of them and say you have three or four of a hero class in the HQ, you could potentially get six to eight attack points. And this is the answer to Chivalrous Duel. You have one card, one hero name, that has all of the attack you need to fight villains that have Chivalrous Duel. You, this is awesome. Um, even if you didn't have Chivalrous Duel, a lot of attack built up here. And you can choose what's in the HQ, or choose what to get empowered by. So, uh, you can't... That, that's pretty good. I... I, that, I'm just going to, yeah, leave it up pretty good. I, I can't make any more compliments on that. Um, now moving on to his next card, his uncommon. This is Flying Steed. And I actually like this card more than the rare for Black Knight. And the reason is, and I'll get more into the Ebony Blade later on for the rare, the reason is you're going to get three attack from this card guaranteed. You'll always have some attack strength. But the part that it really shines is when a Master Strike is played, before it takes effect, you may discard the card. Uh, this card. If you do, draw three extra cards at the end of the turn. Now, this doesn't negate the Master Strike. Don't, don't misinterpret that. The Master Strike is still going to happen, but 
you now get to draw three cards, where if it's a Master Strike that makes you discard cards, you're essentially negating that Master Strike. Uh, if it's uh, any Master Strike that makes your hand get smaller by KOing cards, you're still negating the Master Strike, so you can break even. If it's a Master Strike that makes you weaker or gives you wounds, then, that, uh, sorry, you're still getting that, but hey, now you have three extra cards. Chances are you're going to have a pretty awesome hand the next turn then, and you can then re like return fire to the Mastermind. So, pretty awesome card. Always try to get it when I see in the HQ. Never pass it up. And now we'll go on to the Ebony Blade. Uh, I, I said that I like this one less than the Flying Steed. That doesn't mean it's a bad card. On the contrary, it's an actually really good card. It has zero attack, yes, but its attack is equal to the printed attack value of a villain in your victory pile. Note, this does not count towards Mastermind Tactics because they're not villains. So, and I know, and I can see why the creators put that in there because if they did, that'd be kind of broken. You would essentially get, if you're doing it Mastermind Tactics wise, you get a free Mastermind hit every time you had the Ebony Blade. If you just hit him once, you now will then be able to hit him guaranteed every time you draw this card. So yeah, that would be a little busted. They have to do it based off of villains. Which means if you're only fighting henchmen, you're probably only going to have two, three, or four attack strength Ebony Blade. There are some villains out there that are worth 12. So you could still get a heavy hitter. The hard part is you have to fight that villain first and get it in your deck. Um, so a little more situational. By no means a bad card, but uh, to maximize its potential, you need to have the heavy hitter villains already in your victory pile. Uh, so yeah, uh, because it's a multicolored card and his abilities actually are the only card that's contingent on another class is his common, which I would say you're not buying anyways. Um, he pairs well with almost anybody. You're, uh, because of the empowered, if I had to choose, I would actually say any multi-class hero types are his friends because then you can choose multi-class hero types in the HQ and potentially you have a higher chance of having all one type ready to get empowered by. So Captain Marvel being uh, strength and range means you have blue and green to choose from. Uh, Doctor Strange, off of my playthrough, I used him a lot because I had range and instinct. And with another instinct hero from uh, the Black Knight, they were already set up here. So you could get a lot of empowered chains going on. So multi-class heroes are your friend with Black Knight. You can't go wrong there. Uh, and then if you don't have any multi-class heroes, really, he can kind of work well and synergize with everyone. Just make sure your HQ is stacked with all of one hero class when you get Avalon, uh, Amulet of Avalon. And now, finally, the uh, honestly, I think one of the more random people to show up in this expansion, not that I'm upset about it, but he just kind of, he's just like here, he's like, okay, what's going on? Wonder Man. Uh, Wonder Man is another phenomenal card, I think, out of this expansion. He's got two strength and he's got two range. Uh, and I actually even like, I am actually a huge, huge fan of his common, more so than his other two cards next. The reason that is you get two abilities that you can actually choose from, one of them being uh, a draw card. He has zero attack at the moment, but you can choose to draw a card instead. Drawing Draw power is by far, I think, the best ability to have in this, uh, in this game because you can potentially get more chain reactions to happen. Uh, the other ability that you can choose to do, though, if you don't want to be drawing, is you can get empowered by strength. So hopefully you have other strength heroes in your deck or in the HQ to build off of uh, and make him stronger. If you have five strength heroes down here, you could get five attack just from this common card that only has two, or costs two. Now on to his next one, we have Ionic Energy Wonder Man. Ionic Energy Wonder Man, he comes with two attack, and he can put a card from the HQ in the bottom of the hero deck. If you played a range hero, you get empowered by range. So you're definitely going to want range heroes here to help you out. Uh, and then his next card, which I, I actually like because it's a recruit or an attack, versatility is pretty key here. You can put a card from the HQ on the bottom of the hero deck. If that card had attack icons, you get attack, or, or recruit icons, you get recruit strength. If it had attack, you get attack. If it has both, you get both. And that's three. Three recruit or three attack. Um, this is an awesome card if you use its ability on the same exact absorb ambient power uh, Wonder Man, because then you get three recruit and three attack. So this card pairs well with any other cards that have the dual symbol right here. The ones that leap to mind are Kitty Pride or Domino. If you get Kitty Pride or Domino, you can then stack 
more and more with uh, versatile recruits and attacks. Uh, and then this card, of course, you're going to want uh, range heroes to get more empowered by range. Now, finally, we get into his rare, and his rare is actually got that dual empowerment that I was talking about for range and for strength. He has size changing of strength, so he could potentially become cheaper. And you can choose any number of cards from the HQ, put them on the bottom of the hero deck, then you get those empowerment abilities of range or strength. Uh, so you can try to control the HQ and control what heroes are here. Now, that is... Very important because, of, say, you're doing schemes that are dependent on what heroes are in the HQ, and maybe they KO those heroes, or maybe they get stronger by those heroes. Uh, being able to control what's in the HQ or control what's in the villain deck are good card abilities to have. Not as much as draw. I won't say it's better than draw power, uh, but I will say that's maybe my second favorite ability is controlling what's in the HQ or in the city. Uh, pairing well with Wonder Man, uh, going, because of his empowerment, you want multi-class heroes. But because of his ambient, uh, his uncommon, his ambient power, absorb ambient power, you're going to want cards that have the dual recruit. So you don't necessarily need classes to help you out here. You just need the the star or the scratch icon both present. So like I said, Kitty Pride or Domino, uh, those are pretty helpful. And I and Kitty Pride, I know for a fact, is also a card that pretty much has virtually the same ability as the ambient power. It's just one less. Instead of three, you get two. So you can get a pretty good chain reaction out of the two there. Uh, so yeah, those, that's my review of the heroes and some combos that I think work well with them. Uh, where I'm also going to do what I like to call MVP. I'm going to do this for every small box. And if I had to choose an MVP, the most valuable hero here, I am going to actually go ahead and say it's Black Knight. Uh, one, our, my playthrough actually proved that he was super, super helpful with Chivalrous Duel, so he counteracts an ability right there. But that ability is not just helpful for Chivalrous Duel with Empowerment, it can fight pretty much any other villain or masterman that comes along as well. Um, his Flying Steed, too awesome to say no to because it negates Master Strikes. Uh, this is kind of a flop, so it's it, but it's there, so I use it just for like changing classes. And then Ebony Blade, you could potentially get some heavy hitting power here. Uh, definitely, definitely an awesome card, I would say, or hero set. I'd, I'd call this MVP of Ant-Man. Uh, and if you guys uh, disagree, or if you have any other comments that might make me think otherwise, please leave them in the video below, uh, and we can, dis we can discuss more. But yeah, uh, thanks for watching the shows, and I hope you guys are excited for the next playthroughs.